Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and I'm currently working on a project using a Nissan Leaf electric car motor, and I'm actually getting ready to hook it up to bench test it. Uh, but the thing is, the motor and the inverter are both liquid-cooled, and frankly, I'm going to have to figure out the cooling at some point anyway, so I figured I may as well take care of it right now. So what I did is I ordered a 12-volt electric water pump. I'm going to hook it up. I'm going to show you which pump I ordered and why. And the other thing is it didn't come with any specs on it. So I'm also going to measure how much electricity it uses, how much current from the 12-volt battery, and also what the flow rate is. And then after that, we're going to hook it up to the electric motor. Okay, let's take a look at this pump. Uh, this is a 12-volt DC pump for use in automotive. This is a Bosch brand pump. Uh, they have a good name. Uh, they're used all the time for, you know, good quality modern stuff. And even the description of this pump actually listed it for use with uh, electric vehicles and electric vehicle cooling. So I thought it'd be a good choice. Um, on top of that, somebody on one of the web forums uh, said that they used this exact pump for uh, the liquid cooling of their Nissan Leaf. So I went ahead and ordered it. I just got it. And a couple of things about this pump. Um, we've got our intake and outtake down here, and then we have an electrical connection on this end. Now this pump did not come with um, any sort of a plug to go in here. You know, they kind of assume you're using this as a replacement on your car and you're gonna have the part that plugs right in there. Well, I don't. Um, fortunately, if we look close here, we can see this is marked negative this is marked positive so at least we know the polarity of the pins inside because of course we want the motor to spin just the one way and uh, polarity is important with DC motors it's going to control which direction it spins now those are hard to read so what I did is I just marked the polarity on the outside of the connector a um, couple years ago I found out about um, Sharpie silver markers which are absolutely fantastic because what they do is they let you write on black. And I've mostly used them with electronics, but they're also good for car stuff if we stay in focus here. So um, I've also noticed on here, um, people who've worked with pumps before, it's probably fairly obvious which is the input and which is the output. Um, but if you haven't, it might not be so obvious. Now there is an arrow marked on here. Where is it? Again, it's black on black. Here we go, right down here. So if we get it to hit the light just right, we can see um, there's the arrow. So what I'll do is I'll just add a nice bright silver arrow saying that that's the output and this is the input. Now, what I'm going to have to do is make some electrical connections for this end. And one thing that I found is really super common. There's all sorts of electrical connections. You can just use regular, um, like, quarter-inch spade connectors. So, you know, just for example, your real super common uh, crimp-on-type connectors work just fine for this sort of thing. So all you need is some of these and, yeah, you know, you just typical crimper. And what I did is I just put those connections on both ends of a couple of wires over here. So I've got uh, insulated quarter inch spade connectors on both ends here. And then what I can do is just push it right down in onto the one terminal. And then the other end I can take out to a battery. Um, I've been using this battery for almost everything lately. Uh, these are kind of cool. It's just a little tiny lithium battery, um, but the nice thing, oh, there's our silver Sharpie again. Uh, you know, so I can tell the polarity part. Uh, the connections on here, they're really just quarter inch um, female spade connections. So if you got a male spade connection, it'll push right in here. The other thing is that also just happens to line up with the size of just, you know, your real common um, automotive fuses. So I can literally just stick this in here and then I've got a fused connection, you know, plug the other end right in on that, hook up a wire on the negative end, and boom, I've got a nice little powerful portable 12 volt power supply. So um, all I'll have to do then is hook up just a short piece of hose to the pump, uh, plug in the other wire, and I'll be good to go. 
So all I need to do then is just have uh, my hose clamp. Um, I just cut about a foot section off the uh, six foot roll of hose that I had. Put this on, remember there's our output. I'm actually gonna put this on the input end to suck water up from the bucket. So now we can take this over to our bucket of water and try it out. So on my back porch here, I'm just gonna fill this bucket up with water. Just plugging in my power wires here. Then the other end, just threw a little automotive fuse into the battery. And something important to keep in mind here is that um, most pumps, uh, you have to do what's called priming them, which just means it's not gonna pump unless there's water already in it. So all I'm gonna do in that case is I'm just gonna push this down into the water uh, so that the, not the motor, but basically the pump end is just completely submerged just to get water in there right away. And here we go, I'm gonna plug it in. Oops, there we go. So that sure looks like a pretty good flow. That actually looks like uh, more water than was coming out of my garden hose. So we do have to keep in mind that uh, if we're hooked up to a longer hose, if we have the resistance of going through an electric motor and inverter, uh, the flow is gonna be less. So it's definitely a good sign that we're start starting out with a nice high flow. Now, one of the other things I'd really like to know here is actually how much current is being drawn from the battery right now. Um, I'm using 14 gauge wire. It's not like it feels like it's warm or anything like that. So it's probably a relatively low amount of power. So what I'm gonna do is I've got uh, my multimeter. I'm gonna set it to amps, read current, and I've got an AC, DC current clamp on here. Uh, make sure we're set from AC to DC. Remember, we have to go around one wire, not both. Uh, 0.8 amps. So we're using less than one amp. So uh, 0.8 times 12 volts, that's uh, about 10 watts. Seems like a nice, nice low amount of power, especially if this is running continuously while the vehicle is on. Now the other thing I'd really like to do is measure the flow rate. So I've got a bucket here. It has some markings on the side for gallons. So if I measure how many gallons go into here in one minute, I know the flow rate in gallons per minute. Um, I have no idea how much it'll go through. So I'll probably um, just keep it topped off with the hose here. And I will use my stopwatch so that as soon as I start pumping, I'm also going to uh, use my stopwatch here and we'll see how this goes. Twenty seconds. Thirty seconds, we're at three gallons. I don't think we're gonna make it to sixty seconds. This will be full. Yep, yeah, I ran out of here, okay. Okay, so the crazy thing here is I couldn't actually even get to uh, one full minute. The, gallon, uh, the bucket was more than half full at 30 seconds. It was right almost exactly at three gallons. So I'm gonna say this pump, uh, just the way it is right now at 12 volts, is pumping at six gallons per minute. Um, I would expect that to be a little bit less than that when it's going through the Nissan Leaf motor and inverter, but I'm sure this should still be way more than enough. Should we hook it up? Should we hook it up to the motor? Let's try it. So I think what we'll do with the motors, we got plenty of hose right here. So I think we'll cut maybe a foot or so off of it uh, to go to the output to a bucket. And then this nice long section um, we'll use um, from the bucket to the pump and a short section from the pump to right here. I'm just gonna cut some of this hose here. Um, make a piece to go from the motor.
output from the leaf here. We'll uh, put right down here into the bucket too. Now the only thing here that might really be an issue is priming the pump. Just because there's air in here, there's going to be air trapped in here. I don't think it's going to go right away. I can feel the pump spinning. And yeah, it's just not able. Okay, I just kind of pulled this out to, uh, you know, allow this to pump to start and then cycle through and kind of quick closed it back up. Uh, right away, I do see my water just turned a little blue, so there was still a little bit of coolant left in there. And if I lift this hose, there we go. That's our flow rate right there. Still looks pretty good. And now the other thing I thought I would do is to use my current meter here again and check the wire, how much current is flowing through here. Um, 0.7 amp, huh, go figure. Seven, seven, five. Somehow it got more efficient? <laughs> I, I don't quite understand that. I mean, it's pretty low power, so uh, probably a little, little user error here, but it's nice to know just that um, how much power it uses didn't jump up a whole bunch. And that should be plenty for cooling. Oh, it's colder. <laughs> wow. I can actually feel that the aluminum's colder already. That's bizarre. So cooling a Nissan Leaf motor isn't exactly rocket science. I really wasn't expecting it to be, but um, I just wanted to play around with this, try it out, see what works and what doesn't. Um, it is kind of nice that the ports on here are three quarters of an inch or 19 or 20 millimeters, really standard size. So it was no problem getting a pump that matches that. Uh, also keep in mind that the inverter normally mounts directly on top of the Nissan Leaf motor. So how this would work then is I'd just kind of daisy chain the hoses through the inverter and then back. And of course, it's not going to be a bucket. We're going to be using a radiator. So the other thing I was thinking was um, maybe I use some thermal switches. Um, I'd probably have the pump just turn on right away as long as the motor is running the pump would be running. And then uh, maybe if it gets to a certain temperature, I would have an electric radiator fan attached to the radiator, and then that would do some additional cooling if it's at a higher temperature. Uh, one thing I'll probably wanna do is pull out my thermal camera when I have this up and running and actually take a look at how much heat and where it's making it. So I wanted to do all of this because the next thing I'm gonna be doing is hooking up the motor with this Thunderstruck Motors VCU. Uh, this is a cool little box and what it does is basically uh, control the inverter using some stock off the shelf uh, throttle switches, some real basic things, instead of all the CAN bus controls that would normally control it when it was in a Nissan Leaf. Now it's not going to take it up above stock or anything. Um, in fact, th this is really just a spoof board. It just kind of tricks the motor and inverter into thinking that they're still in a Nissan Leaf. But it's got some cool little features, like I can control the maximum RPM, uh, maximum torque, some things like that. So uh, in the project that I'm working on right now, for example, I might just want to limit the maximum RPM to 2,000, 2,500 RPM, something along those lines. But I'm pretty excited about this, and in the next video, you'll see me hook up the Thunderstruck Motors VCU and start doing some bench testing with the Nissan Leaf motor. I hope you like these videos. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Check us out over at 300mpg.org. And until next time, stay charged up.